Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Dr. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. evening, Bill. I didn't see you sneak on on there. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Ivory. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening. So I have 632. I'm going to get started this evening. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining this evening for the William Penn School District property meeting of April 6, 2022. Tonight, we're going to be talking about facilities master plan. And I'm going to hand the mic over to um, Mike Kelly of KCBA to take us uh, forward with the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Tong, and thank you, uh, everyone, for uh, joining us here tonight. Um, if you'd like, I will share our screen here. Um, let's do... Whoop. Did that work? Oh, I jump right back on. There you go. I do... Try to minimize our pictures there. <laughs> I think we're we're looking at the um, presentation. At but the PowerPoint there. We're looking at the the presenter side of the PowerPoint. I don't know if that's what you're intending. Not the, not the presentation side. The presenter side. Oh, there we go. All right. Can you see the presentation slide of this now? Yes. All right. Perfect. You see the mouse moving around a little bit? Yep. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, we uh, wanted to start tonight um, by uh, thanking you. Uh, certainly in uh, your last board meeting, um, the, the board decided to, to bring us on to uh, move ahead with the architectural and engineering um, process for both uh, East Lansdowne and, and, and Evans. And I wanted to uh, thank you for that. Obviously, we enjoyed working with you guys throughout the study here, um, and we're excited for these next steps. So as you've already completed the ESSER funding applications, um, hired the architect and engineer, um, we're going to start to talk about um, uh, the two projects themselves. We're going to get a little bit specific tonight. Um, there's basically two pathways for both projects, one where it's essentially completely internal, uh, where we're fixing up everything that's within the existing envelope, uh, the existing shell of, of both buildings, um, and another option for both uh, that could possibly have expansion, um, and we'll see the pros and cons of that. So um, what we wanted to do is, is get started with um, talking about those systems, talking about uh, any other development uh, of, of the building projects and certainly to updating everyone about budgets uh, throughout uh, throughout the process here. Uh, the timeline, we're in the, the first phase calling design development. So essentially we're developing the design. We're coming up with further scope um, and we're going to present some, again, cost estimates in June to the board based on uh, the direction that we talk about a little bit tonight. So you can see we're, we've had a lot of steps before anything starts, uh, starts construction. Uh, certainly, even if this was a renovation project, um, you know, we're still 11, you know, 12 months away from, from anything getting started. 
Um, if it is a building addition project, um, either one or both, um, they take a little longer. The difference there is we have what's called land development, where we need to speak with uh, both municipalities, uh, Yaden and East, East Lansdowne, um, and that draws that process out a little bit more. Uh, I think we would still be starting construction in the spring of next year, probably around this time uh, or April of, of next year. Um, and again, more work, longer project, but all of those in either case uh, would be completed by um, the summer of 2024, which is also the requirement for uh, the ESSER funds. So again, you brought us on board. We're gonna have monthly meetings uh, with the property committee meeting. Um, we're gonna coordinate with uh, each of the school's administrators, talk to the principals uh, and teachers in both those schools uh, and start with um, some additional investigations of the site. Um, so where to start? Um, we're talking about the renovation of both buildings, just using the ESSER funding uh, that's available and fixing up mechanical electrical plumbing needs, focusing on indoor air quality, um, fixing some of the um, handicap requirements, things like that. Uh, as I mentioned, for both buildings, we're going to go through both these options tonight, there are options for expansion. Uh, at East Lansdowne, we're talking about a small addition there of about four classrooms. Um, and two additions at Evans. There'd be an, a gym addition and a four classroom addition uh, as well. So it's basically equal in the sense that they're both, both schools would be adding about four classrooms. Um, at Evans, uh, there would be a need for a larger gym as well, because that's a larger school. They're currently using the gym at Cypress, um, which is fine. But again, remember our, our, our 10 year goal is for Cypress to become a middle school when that occurs, those middle school students are gonna need that gym. Um, so that would not uh, be available for Evans. So if we're gonna talk about Evans, uh, the time to do that uh, gym expansion would be now as well. Um, both additions, it's important to understand both project or both additions would include an elevator. Um, again, currently there's, there's no ADA access from the first floor to the second floor uh, in either school. So we'll start with East Lansdowne. You've seen this slide before. We've talked about the existing systems. Um, and remember back where we talked about the, the difference between replacing or improving uh, the HVAC systems of certain buildings uh, for both East Lansdowne and Evans, we talked about replacing. They're, they're uh, both in um, kind of dire need of a uh, replacement. Uh, so a little bit more work involved to both of them. So the steps to get there. If we talk about a small addition, um, that would include an elevator to link both floors. It adds four new classrooms and two small group instruction rooms. Basically, a small group instruction room is a small classroom. Uh, it's not meant for a full class, but it's used uh, oftentimes for um, individual learning, reading groups, um, gifted groups, uh, learning support, um, and one-on-one and, uh, -on -one instruction or small group instruction uh, with uh, teachers and students. Um, you have a couple of those in the school now that have actually been kind of chopped up from uh, full-size classrooms. Renovate music and art, uh, renovate the library. Um, so there's a big difference here when we talk about capacity, because again, we're talking about two stages. We're talking about the K-6 uh, scenario and the K-5 scenario. Um, so we're, we're working on, on uh, a singular building with or without an addition, and then we're talking about it as a sixth grade building or a K to five building. So there's a lot of moving parts there. So we'll try to explain that uh, tonight. Um, as a K to six building, that would account for 350 students. So you basically have, this is at East Lansdowne again, uh, two glass classrooms per grade. Um, at K to five, we would maintain that. You would still have two classrooms per grade. So we didn't lose space. We didn't knock down uh, a part of the building. But what happens is those learning support classrooms that they have now um, would go away uh, in the K-6 method. So you're going to be struggling for those types of learning support spaces uh, until the sixth grade moves out. And now we've got those spaces again. Um, so that's something that I can, I can point out here in a little while. Um, so it does provide a better balance of classrooms in the short term for K-6. Uh, and certainly a more ideal educational setting for the future K-5. So, um, you know, that addition is basically showing that addition is needed now and certainly uh, will be utilized uh, in the future. Um, I think we went through that already. Um, so this is Evans. Um, that's the difference here. 
Um, so at Evans, we talked about, um, again, replacing the, the system, um, very similar things here, except Evans is already a larger school. Uh, so you're looking at three grades, um, uh, three classrooms per grade. At K to six, we don't really get the full three classrooms per grade. There's, there's not enough classrooms for that. And in fact, even right now, you don't have uh, three per grade. Uh, you have some that are two. In fact, you have um, a few that are only one. Um, so this would provide a uh, more uh, classroom spaces and it does still have some uh, learning support spaces. But when sixth grade moves out, then everything is completely balanced. So here at Evans, we don't wanna overbuild. It'll work as a K-6, uh, but it'll be ideal uh, as a K-5 in the future. And you'd have three classrooms per grade, that's 450 students. Uh, so you're looking at East Lansdowne at 300, Evans at um, 450. So this is your existing um, capacity, existing um, uh, percentage. Uh, we've kind of seen this before. We've actually updated this chart as we've learned more about uh, each school. Um, so as we look at um, the need overall in the district, we had said before there's about the need of about two thirds of a school to, to balance out that overcrowding. This is staying as a K-6. So the result obviously of moving sixth grade out certainly helps, uh, but there would need to be a little bit of expansion at these two buildings uh, to kind of help uh, balance everything out, even at the K-5 level. Um, so we look short term. So we're talking up there in the upper right, it's the short term K-6 to six enrollment. So this is maintaining what you have. Um, just by bringing those four additional classrooms in at East Lansdowne, again, it doesn't affect anything else. We're only really dealing with East Lansdowne here. Um, you can see where that school goes from, you know, 134 down to 96. So we're we're still a little bigger than we want to be, but again, you still have sixth grade there. Um, but it's certainly a lot better than uh, the overcrowding uh, that they're seeing there now. Um, at Evans, uh, the enlargement here, again, short term, really brings that into a much more manageable position at about 85%, which is really actually the target. Um, so while we're, uh, we have the capacity for 450, you know, that 830 or that 384 is kind of the, the perfect range for uh, how many students would be there. Um, so that's what that looks like again for, for everyone else. Pretty, again, everybody else stays the same. We haven't really adjusted anybody at the K-6 model, but in the K-5 model with those additions, and uh, again, this is another chapter that we can talk about. We were talking about taking um, the autistic support uh, that's currently at Alden uh, and splitting that out to Ardmore and Walnut. Um, again, no buildings, no projects at any of those schools, but just by moving some of those students into schools that have a little bit of capacity, um, some of the Ardmore students could actually move into uh, Evans because uh, now that Evans has, has grown and is much larger, um, this is a way then to balance everything out with both of those additions at Evans and East Lansdowne and at a K-5, this balances everything out. Uh, Colwyn is still, uh, is still used, it's still eight, eight schools. Uh, so this is the long-term goal, but it shows that these two additions uh, are part of not only short-term uh, help, uh, but long-term goals. There's a lot of numbers. Any questions there before I was going to show the two, uh, the two specific layouts uh, for East Lansdowne and Evans, but any questions here as we talk about enrollment? Can um, someone refresh my memory um, when potentially uh, would sixth grade, what year would sixth grade be moving out? So that all depends on when the addition at um, Green Avenue is built. Um, you're probably looking at at least a year of design. You're looking at a year of building the addition, probably a year, year and a half of renovating the existing building. Um, so let's say if you said go tonight, you're probably four years away from that. Um, the planning of that, we talked about starting the planning next year, meaning that you're five years from now. So the class of what year is this? 27, August of 27 um, would be the first year where you'd have ninth grade um, at, uh, at Green Ave and this would all be, uh, be balanced out. 
Um, the Green Avenue project is big. Um, the addition that we're talking about building is very large. Um, so by the time you build that and then use that as swing space, we, that, that addition would be completed. We would still keep it as a 10, 11, 12 building for a year while we renovate. So you can take a couple of classrooms from the third floor of Green Ave, put them in the new building, renovate the third floor, do that for the second floor, do that for the first floor. Um, and then the, that following year when Green Ave is uh, complete, the addition's done, the, the renovation's done, um, that's when you would be ready for, for this. So in that 10-year plan, the six-year plan, um, when, we, when we focused primarily on the high school, um, you're most like, and then budgeting, you're most likely looking about five years out from today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, I think I have two questions. <clears throat> the adding the uh, addition to East Land down, <clears throat> that would eliminate also the need for the trailer outside? Yes. And I guess my second question is, besides East Land down in Evans, are there any other schools on this list that have second floors that are not ADA compatible? I want to say it was Bell Ave. Um, I don't, re I can't remember now if that had an elevator or not. I'll have to go back and look. Um, Bell Lab was the other school. Remember originally we had talked about um, possibly building an addition there. That's the other school that could be in the future expanded. And in this case, and in this scenario, um, if, the if the decision was made to repurpose Cowin, um, those 128 students, it would make the most sense for them. They would head north into Walnut. You'd take the the furthest north 128 kids that go to Walnut and move them into Bell Ave. Um, so that would be future, future, if you wanted to um, next step, um, because that's the only other, really the best building to expand um, because it's multiple floors and it has land to do so. Uh, some of the other schools were um, certainly much more of a challenge um, or in say Walnut's case, you know, uh, pretty landlocked. Uh, to build an addition. And just to refresh my memory again, where's Bell Avenue in the queue? Bell Ave is not in the queue in the sense of expanding. Bell Ave would be in the queue to renovate um, after, as part of the uh, the ten year plan. Um, and if the if the focus and priority is the high school. Um, the thought was you're doing these two schools first, East Lansdowne and Evans. Um, one, because they were the two that quite frankly needed it the most. Um, and sure. it gives you the, the best short-term relief. Um, and then the high school, because that was the, uh, the priority there. And then okay. after the high school, then again, you've got um, you know, certainly a list of other schools to uh, to take a look at. Walnut was one of the ones that, that also had some HVAC needs as well. Thank you. I have a question. Um, just for clarif clarifying, I asked this question from Jan yesterday. At what point did we make the decision to add the additions? Because the last, um, prior, prior, our last meeting, I know someone asked that question and the addition was not on the table right now. So I'm just curious, how did this get added into the option based on our It hasn't. Time? So okay. that's that's the conversation for tonight. So can I um, ask, can I ask sure. the question of why are we not looking at all of the schools that have possible addition abilities? Why are we not it looking at really, all the it, these? These were the two, um, East Lansdowne and Evans, that um, the, their existing facilities had the most need. So they rose to the top. And we said, these are two that need a full replacement of HVAC equipment. It has the, uh, the, the most needs to be fixed. Correct. We said, while we're there, um, they could certainly also be expanded. East Lansdowne, um, multiple. Um, same thing with Evans. Um, so in both cases, they were uh, in the highest need and, and the least expensive to um, expand. You wouldn't need to expand any of the other schools um, unless you wanted to, like saying, okay, we're going we're gonna to repurpose Cowin. 
And then all of a sudden, all right, what am I doing with that 128 kids? So that's where a, a suggested addition at Bell Ave could occur. Um, if, if enrollment continues to grow or, or you see a big spike in enrollment, um, certainly Bell Ave would, could be the, the next place to, uh, to expand. I, I believe in the study we showed an addition at Park Lane, um, just basically saying, could you expand there? Yeah, sure. Um, you don't have to. Um, we were looking at the areas that it was um, uh, that would create the best impact, uh, and certainly in the in this first uh, first year or two of of, of a ten year plan, Eastland, Sound, and Evans was uh, the area that made the most uh, the biggest impact. One more question: If um, without the additions to Eastland, Sound, and Evans, could the funding that would go that would, the cost for the additions? Would that be anything that could be added to uh, the addition to the high school to work on making it larger so that will resolve the overall overcrowding? So the funding from ESSER is essentially doing the renovation package. Sure. Um, so that money is, is spoken for. You're, you're adding, and that's something that Jeff will certainly talk about, you're adding money to the budget by... Um, adding these additions. If, you, um, if you're adding additional capacity at the high school, that doesn't really offset anything at the elementary school level um, because we're not having elementary school kids there. Um, so anywhere that we're trying to alleviate the overcrowding of K-6 and eventually balance everything at K-5, um, we would need to expand at one of the elementary schools that's, that are staying as, as an elementary school. I think if I may add for me, um, we should not have buildings in our district that are not handicap accessible. Um, it's, it's, I believe by doing this amount of construction, we would hit the ADA compliance. So um, for me, just me, East Lansdowne and Evans becoming handicap accessible um, is, is super important. Will we include Bell Avenue if that's also a school that does not have an elevator? That should be in consideration as well. Every school, I, if that's I would, a concern, yeah, I would include I would that. With that Ms. Ivory. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I think at, at Evans, uh, we found a way, uh, and I'll show you that we found a way to get the elevator kind of inside the existing building. At East Lansdowne, that wasn't possible. Um, so at East Lansdowne, even at a minimum, you'd have to build some sort of elevator tower um, to, to develop that. Um, so that could be a, a similar elevator only expansion at Bell Lab if you wanted to look at that uh, as well as a, as a separate thing you know, at, a, at a later date. Okay, and I just have one, I'm sorry, I said that the last time. I have another question. I don't recall, I know you had it somewhere in your presentation at some point um, in terms of the communities and how, who we service so my question is, do we have any idea of how many students we service from say Darby, Yaden, and then Lansdowne? And then could we look at, not the school, not the enrollment, I'm talking about the students in which they're residents. Because I know all students don't, that go to the schools don't necessarily live in that particular town. So is there, any, this might be a Jan question, if we could look into that. Yeah. We, something before. we have looked at that data uh, before. Um, the only way that gets a little uh, different is for our special programs like autism support, special right. and ELL. And could you tell me what was, which community yields the most students? I believe that's Darby. Okay. But sure, the data. Yeah, we had a, a chart before that kind of showed you've got more students to the north than you do to the right. south. I remember you had um, something. So, so my question is, why are we not looking at a school in the Darby area to make the additions? Because then that would draw students from all of these schools, other schools, back to their own community. If space is well, added. Yeah, I mean, both both schools are to the north. I mean, East Lansdowne's about as north as you can, and, and Evans is 
central but north as well. So what we liked about expanding Evans is it actually could draw some kids out of Ardmore, which is your your largest school, but also your largest uh, enrollment. Um, because right now the closest one to Ardmore is either Evans or East Lansdowne. Yes, but in line with um, with Miss Ivory is asking, how many students would return to their home school? Perhaps if we were looking at a school like Walnut. Yeah, I, I also think that um, I, we didn't answer the question though. Yeah, I don't I don't have that information as far as if students are going to a school outside of their catchment area. That's something we'd have to work with the district to find out in the um, enrollment study uh, or, or just kind of find out where the, the catchment areas are coming from. Yeah, I also think to Miss Ivory's request would be nice to know the students by grade. Um, if at all possible, um, there, while well, I believe, recall that the most students come from Darby, they may come to certain grades, um, right? M moving at certain times, et cetera. So I think looking at um, students and where they attend um, by grade might also be interesting and, and helpful in our understanding where our students are. Right. And I only ask that because not in regards, we definitely have to do the upward the HVAC systems. Those, like you said, you presented that that is a dire need, but I feel like the additions, my concern is Eastland's additions is not going to rectify the issue in terms of numbers. So why would we add an addition? It's almost, to me, it's like putting a Band-Aid on something. Um, versus going into another community. And I, I've said this before, we did we remodeled Ardmore X amount of years ago. So Lansdowne has had a new building done and our taxpayers come from all of the boroughs. So my concern is if we are putting just upgrades into Lansdowne and then also Evans Services Yaden, I think we also have to look at other communities. And if Darby yields the most of our students, Dar to me, Darby should re be receiving some type of upgrades to help bring their students potentially back. If not, you know, regardless of what grade level they're in, but if they yield the most students, I'm just thinking we should be looking at additions if we're talking that, if it's, you know, in the budget, that's just my, my two cents. And since we last met, and this was not a part of the equation, it's a lot to digest. I'm looking at this point, the cost, you mentioned the tower um, having to be outside um, and as opposed to being able to be inside. Let's talk about what the renovation, not the renovations and the HVAC, the expansion, what are the costs associated in the East Lands Now um, project? Perfect segue. Um, so we had looked at, um, for East Lansdowne, um, two things again, a renovation project. This is everything inside the building. Um, so we're talking about indoor air quality, all new HVAC system throughout, um, life safety uh, upgrades, your fire alarm system, um, ceilings and lighting, um, uh, ADA compliant restrooms and things. When, we, when, when the um, deputy secretary was uh, was here. She visited this school and we walked into a classroom um, and I said, this is perfect. And I pointed out they had um, the air conditioning running, the heater was running and the window was open. And I was like, it's, they're all fighting each other because it's just not a, a, a very modern system. Um, so I was like, that's, that's exactly our problem. And I said, yep, we see it. Um, so all of that trying to be uh, rectified is, is the main part of that renovation piece. In the expansion, what this does is the, the four classrooms and the elevator addition. So the difference in cost here is essentially just the addition um, of that, uh, it's about 6,500 square feet. So it's about 3,200 square foot uh, footprint addition that sits in the, in the back of the school. 
So you can see here the um, existing school, the property line in the back, there's the modular classroom that uh, Mr. Callahan was talking about. Um, the front entrance right now is steps. Uh, so there's no, um, there's actually no ADA way even to get into the building, let alone to the second floor. Um, and then this was the area that we had identified as buildable. That's, that's an extension of the second floor. It's already what's called impervious uh, coverage. It's already um, paved. So if we put a building on top of it, we're not adding, um, we're not taking away green space by doing that. Um, so that's the existing uh, building there. So this is where we're talking about the addition in blue and then building an ADA accessible ramp to the front door. It's the existing front door of the school. We would build a ramp uh, out along Emerson uh, to bring people uh, up into the school itself. So it's a two-story addition. Uh, it removes that modular trailer. We wouldn't need that anymore and adds the ramp in the front. So this is the existing school here now. There's, uh, there's only four classrooms uh, on the first floor. You can see those uh, SGIs that I had talked about earlier. Again, those types of small learning support classrooms. Um, and then you have the modular trailer uh, in the back. Um, so the capacity in, on this existing floor is only 100 students, again, because there's only uh, the floor, four of the indoor classrooms. If we look at the second floor, there's a few more classrooms. We have the art and music suite upstairs as well. Um, you have six upstairs, so 100 and 150. That's where we're getting the, the 250 um, current capacity. Again, kind of using that number of, of 25 kids in a class as the target. Um, the total potential then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is 350, and this is how we would do that. Uh, you'd have the addition on the left, you'd have that ADA ramp in the front. So um, what you have now right here at the end of the hallway, similar to this hallway, is a stair. Um, so it's hard, you, we'd have to move that stair, essentially rebuild it um, in the addition. So the stair, instead of being in the hallway, turns the corner, and that's where you have this E here, which is the elevator uh, and two classrooms. Um, it could be any classroom you want. We had kind of considered these maybe to be kindergarten classrooms. We could e include uh, toilet rooms in those classrooms if, uh, if you uh, thought that was uh, saw a good idea. We, we oftentimes, these are, this is the first time these kids are coming to school. So a lot of times you see toilets in, in kindergarten classrooms. So that's a, a big advantage of being able to build that here. Um, so here you'd have kindergarten first and second on the first floor. You still have the library. You know, we've added another um, learning support classroom. And then as you come upstairs, you can see you have third, fourth, fifth, and then sixth um, in the K-6 model. And if six came out, now I've got, uh, again, more spaces for learning support. Maybe I have an art room and a music room, um, some additional room to kind of uh, spread out a little bit uh, here. So that's the, the very compact and small addition. Uh, again, that would go along with the full renovation um, of the entire school. So this is just, again, more of a summary of what we had talked about in the past. So the cost breakdown for all of that, the renovations um, of the uh, building systems, the HVAC infrastructure, and then in this case, we're showing the additions and site work. Um, and all of these numbers that we always share, we always have contingencies built in. Contingencies are basically the, extra money for things that we hope you don't have to spend. But um, you know, when you start opening up an older building, uh, you may come across some things that uh, needs, need to be fixed. Um, so not only in the planning stage, uh, we have a, a contingency. We also do that in the construction phase as well, essentially below that $8.9 million line. Um, so again, it's money we don't want you to spend, but we think you should budget uh, for a project of this size. Um, then you have things like soft costs, which are fees and testing. Uh, FF and E is furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So that's another budget number. Um, we're going to build four new classrooms, so we're going to need furniture there. Um, but maybe we don't have new furniture everywhere else. Uh, that would that would greatly reduce that uh, that number. If you were going to buy new furniture uh, for the entire school, that would be a budget um, appropriate for something of that size. So. That's how I wanted to show a little bit more depth behind the numbers that we are sharing. Um, again, we think these are pretty conservative numbers. Construction costs have gone way up, so hopefully things are starting to come back down. Um, so we've been, again, very conservative with these. Um, but this would be the, the scope breakdown and the cost breakdown 
um, of the renovation pieces, uh, as well as the additions. Any questions on Evan, on East Lansdowne before we jump to Evans? Yeah, Mike, I'm sorry. What are soft costs? Soft costs are, um, that's us. There's, um, that's not all of us. Uh, fees, there's going to be um, testing, uh, building permits, um, uh, application fees when it goes to the county for environmental testing. Um, so again, that's another budget of, of dollars that you shouldn't have to spend all of that. Um, but that's 15% for soft costs is pretty typical to budget. Um, most of the time, you're probably looking at 12%. Um, but at, you know, again, trying to make sure that we're um, being conservative. You know, we, we've we got somebody that's uh, on the inside there, at least lands down. Oftentimes, one of the first things we do is talk to the municipality about um, waiving uh, permit fees. Um, again, that's taxpayer money going to another taxpayer entity. Uh, oftentimes, there's a good partnership there that they can say, hey, you know what, we'll waive, we'll waive your permit fees. We have to charge you for inspections because their inspection company is going to charge um, uh, the municipality for those inspections. So they'll pass that charge along. But, um, you know, other things can be waived. And that's, that's a usual a, a good way to get that, um, that number to come down by, uh, by partnerships with, uh, uh, with a township in the borough. Great, and your your cost is flat at five or six percent. Yes, I think we're six. Okay, so we're and that, part of that, that. And again, that's us, yeah. and that's that's um, uh, mechanical engineers. Also included in in the soft cost piece would be the civil engineer as well, um, which is an engineer that comes in and designs the site work, um, surveys the site. So we need surveys, um, testing. Uh, so if we do agree to get, move ahead with um, the addition uh, portion of the project, um, that would be another package to, to uh, look at as well. The, the geotechnical testing, infiltration testing, which is um, you know, how much uh, groundwater gets uh, consumed by the grass in the field back there. Um, so that's where all of that comes out. And I can, I can provide a, a breakdown for that for you. And well. that's currently not in this equation. No, it is. That's what's in that 15%. Okay. So that's why, again, we kind of make that number high. We can, we'll break all those things out. Throughout any of these projects, you see every dollar that's spent from the construction to any changes for, you know, fees and for furniture. Everyone, every dollar that's spent um, throughout all of these things is a line item that uh, the board will see and the public will see. So for East Lansdowne, it's essentially $2 million to uh, add the four extra classrooms, make the building ADA compliable, and reduce class size from 135% to, what was it, 90%? It was like 98, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's it's a small school, and it's a small addition. Um, adding that addition really makes that, that building uh, balance out to uh, two classrooms per grade and provides that ADA compliance. So um, that's the difference here versus adding a, you know, an addition onto the high school. Um, we're building you know, about 100,000 square feet. <laughs> so bigger buildings have, you have bigger needs. This is a, a smaller building. Mike, I think the difference is a little bit more than that. I think it's, if you go 11 million to the other slide you have, it's seven, it's about 3.7, I think. between this and the renovation portion. Yeah, when you look at the additions up here, the, the 2.6 on top of that is, is the contingencies and soft costs and, and all those other things that go on top. So um, I think you're right. I think it was about 2.8 or, or close to three total project. Um, and that's, we always try to make that distinction as well. There's the total construction cost, and then there's the total project cost of everything that goes into the uh, entire project. So yeah, so if you call that about a, uh, if you want to round up and say it's about three million dollars in addition to the uh, renovation portion to to have that addition.
like um I think it was maybe um page eight and nine of the report. It says something to the effect that this doesn't and does not affect other capacities in the district what you're doing at East Lane. I think it was page nine. Yeah, so um, one of the questions that was asked was, hey, when we build this addition onto Evans, well, what or East Lansdowne rather, what does that do for the district? I said, well, it, it's not affecting, because we're only adding four classrooms, um, it's not really affecting the rest of the district. Um, because we're not going to start moving, you know, three kids at a time out of out of Walnut and things like that and start moving other things around. It's the beginning of the, the, the larger solution. The, the biggest thing that affects um, the entire district are the, the moves at the high school. Um, you know, the ability to, you know, because every student is gonna go through um, that high school as, as a ninth through 12th grader. Every student in the district is gonna benefit from um, the two middle schools where now sixth grade is out of the elementary school. So there's, one or two little moves at an individual school um, that is that is then um, being applied to the overall effect of, of the entire district. Um, I so th I'm sorry. This, this project by itself is not affecting the district uh, capacity, um, but this project is a step to other steps that then is uh, the thing that's, that's rectifying or, or, or certainly aiding um, uh, the capacity issues that we have at, at the other schools. I think the page uh, Ms. Richardson is talking about is 11, and it does move us, it was there for a second, um, it, it, it does move us from 134% capacity um, down to 96% 96. 96. capacity. So it does benefit that the community that attends East Lansdowne which is a majority of Lansdowne and East Lansdowne at the present. Um, so it does move us from way over capacity to just under capacity at K to six. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think, I believe that to be a very positive move for those 360 students, 50. So how many students do we have at East Lansdowne? Now? Current enrollment is 336 uh, at, uh, in 2019. I, I don't think we have anything. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you have the numbers for the current uh, enrollment at, at East Lansdowne. I do not have it on hand, but we do have it. Yeah, I believe we get that in our uh, regular updates. I'm trying to find one right now. So Marla um, has a question. I have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, so um, good evening. Um, the, the, the question that I have is, is that I know we're here discussing the additions. Um, the issue that I have is, is that as a board, the additions it's not like it's, this is something that we all sat and we talked about with regard to adding additions. What I would like to know is, is that where, you know, when I, when we received this phone call about the additions being added, um, it was said that this was discussed. So my thing is, is that if we're going to move forward, or even if we're not going to move forward with regard to the additions, we should have discussed this as a board to say that we would like to present this to the public. This was nothing that was discussed all together as a board. And now we're having conversation about additions. And this was not in our original arrangement. So can we talk about where the additions, where that first was brought together to say that we were going to present this? Ms. Boykins, uh, yes. the, the additions were in one of the first presentations made. Go up. They actually um, came out um, and were taken out at a later date, but I can uh, go back. They were actually in some of the very first presentations made by KBCA. 
Yes, I do. I do understand, Jen. And then what we did was we made an agreement on what we were going to do with moving forward. And then additions was not discussed in that with saying that this is what we're going to do. So I'm just to the point where all of the board of directs should talk about this addition. I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting here um, saying that, you know, yay or nay, but what I feel is though that this addition, it, yes, it was in our packets, but it's not something we all said, let's do this. This is what we're going forward to do. So that's where I'm trying to clarify. In so, fact, at our last- and if, and, Yes, thank you. Uh, I was gonna say, could other board of directs please speak on this as well? So well, for me, I was getting ready to, to ask a question, but you're, you're speaking on it. In fact, um, if my memory serves me correctly, um, Ms. Richardson um, asked multiple times at our last meeting, is this what we're doing? And it did not have additions. And so to arrive with the quick turn, and I got a heads up, but the heads up that we're going to speak about it is not a conversation had as a, a board. We didn't even discuss it um, collectively in a property meeting um, bef before now as a board. And, and I want to address that, uh, those, those concerns. So to have the conversation, this is the forum for those conversations for all of our board members to have. We, are, we, we have to bring these things to light. And I was asked, you know, feedback came back from our um, last meeting that we should have these, uh, should consider the additions because there, there are some things regarding ADA compliance that we are not addressing. So we have brought those things here to this meeting here to be discussed as a board. And this is, again, not a decision-making a meeting. This is a meeting where we kind of go through the uh, this uh, decision process. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So can I speak on that, um, uh, Mr. Tong? In that conversation, if I'm correct, we we said that if we we didn't know if it was accurate or not. We did not know if if we were going in there to do HVAC. We did not know if that we would have to. Um, basically and put in, in elevators. This was something that it was told to me that, you know, maybe if we're breaking ground, we have to add the elevators. We were unsure. So that never came, that information never came back to me. It was stated to me that, okay, this is an addition. This is something else that we want, we want to add on because this is something that is needed. So I'm just trying to understand where all is aboard this was discussed that, okay, we're doing the HVAC, so we have to do uh, the elevators. Cause that, that was something that you said you were gonna come back and let us know on with regard to, is it a mandatory thing? I understand it was a mandatory thing since we already were in there, we had to get it done. I don't know if that, that information ever came back. Is so it mandatory? You know what? So my, is it mandatory? Ms. Cook, Henry, go ahead. I just asked, is it mandatory? Yes. Um, so the, the law for ADA compliance was back in 1992. Um, and there is no grandfathering for any of that. So um, there was leniency for many, many years, but now it's been 30 years. Um, the, the local codes will say you need, if you get to a certain level, you need to bring up more and more things to uh, building code compliance. Um, but the fact that you don't have accessibility into this building or from one floor to another, you're, you're not in compliance. Um, it, it's not like the fire marshal who comes out every year and inspects everything that somebody's going to come and, and shut the building down. Um, but if there ever was a concern or, or an issue at this school, this is uh, something, again, that's been in place for 30 years that you've been out of compliance for. Um, that the district would have a, a, a tough, a tough legal battle um, to defend to say, well, we've had this building this long and, and haven't covered this. And certainly, if you're going in uh, to renovate, 
and, and this is really kind of how that conversation uh, expanded. Well, you know, if we're going to be here and we're going to do this, shouldn't we at least get the ramp in? Shouldn't we at least do the elevator? If we're going to do an elevator, don't you think we should add a classroom or two? Um, so that's, uh, as, as Mr. Tong had said, um, that's kind of how the conversation started. Uh, and that's why we're here tonight to try to uh, talk to you guys about um, you know, finalizing the scope of both of these projects. We know these are the first two to go. We know we want to focus on the renovations. Um, this was an opportunity to say, you know, at one or both or, or neither, um, let's, let's go and, and add, those, uh, add those classrooms, add that a little bit more that's going to, you know, make that, make that school a school we don't have to worry about for another 25 years. Uh, you did that at Ardmore. Um, fantastic building, great renovation. You know, that's, that's not a project or a building you're going to need to look at for a, a long time. Um, so that was, uh, that was the thought, that was the conversation, and that's why we're uh, presenting these two options uh, tonight. I have a question. So we're out of compliance with all of our buildings that don't hold elevators. And we stated earlier, Bell Avenue as well does not have an elevator. Bell Avenue does not, yes. So my question is, why is that not being um, entertained if we are out of compliance, because we want to make sure all of our buildings are within compliance, why are we not looking at elevators for each of the buildings that for every building that is not in compliance versus making additions to schools? If we're trying to be in compliance, because we're trying to do the HVAC, we're trying to get the buildings to a certain level to where they're, you know, they're functional. Mm -hmm. We know we need to do a lot more, but my concern is if we're not in compliance with the elevator in lieu of putting additional classrooms, which yes, they are greatly needed, we need to make sure all of our buildings are in compliance. And if they're not, I don't, I'm confused why Bell Avenue is not on this list. Yeah, I think it's it's priority and it's budget. Um, you know, as, as we said, as we were getting into the, the study, I mean, there's a lot to do everywhere. Right. Um, yeah, I understand and it that. It just comes down to budget. So we could look at this as, you know, hey, let's just, you know, we won't do the classrooms, but we'll just do the elevator addition here and renovate. We could look at Bell Ave and just do an elevator addition there by itself or renovate as well. Um, you know, my response back is always, yes, you should do all those things. But um, all of this comes down to money and priorities. And if the priority, as we've discussed before, was what is the, the quickest way we can get um, ninth grade back into the high school, sixth grade uh, into middle schools, um, and do that on a, on a planned budget, um, that was, okay, let's get, let's get the two buildings with the, the, the most need out of the way while we're focusing on, on the big project, the big expense, which is the high school. And then Yes, you need to do that at Bell Lab. It's just a matter of when and, and uh, when you can budget for that. So can we get some figures related to becoming compliant with the schools that we need to become compliant and um, at this point hold off renovation, I mean, ex expansion? So mm -hmm. compliance to me, right at this point, um, appears to be our priority as opposed to um, in all of our schools, looking at all of them, um, expansion. Yeah, we can, we can take a look at Bell Ave and, and do that. And, you know, we have the renovation number of what we think that would cost, but we could look at it as uh, an elevator addition only um, cost. That was something that we had done in, in uh, I'm just going to jump ahead here for, um, for Evans, property line building area. Um, right there, you see where it says interior elevator in that um, yellow square? Um, that was where inside Evans, it's a storage room and actually the old incinerator, um, that we thought, okay, we can do this internally. This is the, the two-story portion of Evans. It starts right there. You can see this one stair here and there's another stair at the end because um, the front part of Evans is only one story. Uh, it's this back classroom wing that's two stories. So if we, if we have the elevator here, it's near the front door. Um, perfect, we can go uh, uh, up there. So this was something that we were planning to do in the renovation only scheme at Evans. 
Um, we're just not able to do that at East Lansdowne. So, um, so again, here at, at Evans, we were just talking about a, a possible um, classroom expansion in the back. Again, very similar to East Lansdowne, removing a stair and building two, two classrooms. And then what you could do, you could not do. Um, and the, a, a small gym addition uh, here as well. So in any of these projects, we could start with the HVAC only. Again, that's, that's very needed. Um, you could always expand in the future. Um, that would be fine. You know, you'd have a, a completely uh, renovated building. Um, everything would be great. And then you could always expand whenever you felt you wanted to do that. Um, there's some cost savings to do that all in, in one project. Um, but that's, again, something that can be prioritized and planned. Right. Here at, at Evans, we can get the elevator at East Lansdowne. We would have to have some sort of an addition out there um, to make that elevator work. But I, no, I'm gonna if I can may, I jump in for a minute? Can, can I just, if I may, we also need to look at capacity. If we do not add classrooms at East Lansdowne, we will have completed this project and they will still be at 134% of capacity. So, right, we, we need to, to balance everything. I think we more apt should be looking at adding an elevator and what we need to bell to make that compliant versus being subtractive at Evans and East Lansdowne where the, there are capacity issues as we stand today and if we don't fix them, we will have completed a 10 year project and there'll still be capacity issues. So, so lots to consider. Sorry, Mr. Callahan. That's okay. So uh, I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Um, so when we initially proposed this, uh, I'm, I'm repeating some of this, that expansion was on the table at a number of these schools, including Evans and East Lansdowne. Okay, so, uh, they were simply put by, in my opinion, or my recollection, they were put by the wayside so we could vote to move on with uh, the essentials of the project, um, including the HVAC and the, some of the ADA compatibility. Uh, I, I believe I specifically asked at the last meeting when we voted that this did not preclude us for the expansion projects and, and other issues. And that was the answer. That was yes, it does not preclude us. So. This isn't being sprung on anybody. It isn't a surprise. It's simply a conversation within the normal uh, pattern of, of developing a final plan. And as far as Evans and East Lansdowne goes, I'll simply state my own opinion that, and Bell, that uh, if, it, if it's construction-wise engineering feasible, that an elevator being added to Bell uh, is a good idea. It's probably essential. As far as Evans and East Lansdowne goes, I sort of agree. I well, I sort of I agree with Jen that if you're going to start the project and then come back to it six, seven years later to expand, it might be penny wise, but it's pound foolish uh, that you, you you can't leave these schools over capacity for that long. And if you're going to do this without making them ADA compatible, uh, now with Evans, there's maybe a engineering wise a shaft already prevalent. East Lansdowne, he's saying that there's not. Uh, you, you may have issues with putting in seven, $8 million of worth and not bringing those second floors up to uh, accessibility. So I'm in favor of both Evans and East Land down expansion as prescribed by the, the um, consultant. I'm also in favor of adding an elevator as, as quickly as possible to uh, Bell to make that second floor ADA compatible. That's it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, we know that we're not, we weren't close to the additions, but there was clearly a discussion had outside of our meeting with someone um, because none of the board members, we don't, I don't know how Evans and, and East Lansdowne came onto the presentation. I understand they're needed. I understand the capacity issue. I know we, we are in need in every school. Um, however, the discussion should be had with the entire board as to what's, what are we going to do in terms of expansion before this was even brought to this presentation. Um, if compliance is the issue, then addition cannot. Yes, we are at capacity, I understand that. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have the funding to do everything at once. So we're putting a Band-Aid on something and we're gonna spend million dollars. And an example would be Ardmore Avenue. 
I just have to say it. Armour Avenue did millions of dollars of renovations and then later found out they had to put a new roof on after renovation. Like we have to, we want, we can't just jump into something as a band-aid and think that it's gonna correct all because we wanna make ensure that in the future when we finish the high school, open up the middle, pull sixth grade out, then we'll have a solid idea of how many students we service. And if we're looking at the numbers of who, what communities we service, if East Lansdowne is not the higher number, we need to look at those schools, in my opinion, that service the dish that we service the most students. Because again, Ardmore, Lansdowne has received an, addi an addition. Ardmore is at capacity because they added so much space. However, there are other schools in the district that need work as well. Whether it's a capacity issue uh, or whatever the issue might be, we have to make sure because taxpayers are paying the tax dollars. And in my opinion, it's a bad look on our part as board of directors to add, to upgrade another building in the area of Lansdowne when everyone's paying the tax, gonna carry this burden of taxes at the end of the day. So I think we need to look at, this needs to be thought and discussed as a board before this presentation should have happened to decide what makes sense for the entire district, not just one community. We know Evans is Yaton, it's a different community. They have not had any upgrades, but Lansdowne has already received a new school. And we're talking about making another school in Lansdowne function a little bit more, but we're leaving all these other schools left. East Lansdowne is not Lansdowne. Let me be clear yeah. about that. But you pull from, you probably pull from Lansdowne, East Lansdowne. It's a community on the same border. That's why I asked about Darby. Because that's I, I, mean, I know it sounds self-serving. I know it sounds self-serving on my part, but anybody who knows me would agree that it's not. If, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Okay, I'm not stand, I'm, uh, let me finish. If it was one of the other schools that was uh, in the worst shape HVAC and was 135 percent over capacity and was not the ADA compatible, I would be uh, espousing for the same action that I'm espousing for right now to get that building up the code, ADA compatible and relieve the uh, overcrowding. It's as simple, it, it, it's, it's as, simple as that. If, if, if I, I don't know how else to explain it. And then again, I'm in the same boat here with, with Evans. Get it done now. It's rather they come back and revisit it later. You know, it, I, it, as, I think looking at the numbers of students, because if we look at the capacity right now, Walnut is at 77%. It is the most, uh, least overcrowded school in our district, um, which, which I, I would love to understand more um, and because that does not align with my thinking that um, Darby spends the most students um, of our six communities. Um, so maybe I'm wrong there. Well, we also, Jen, have to look at um, when, we, when Ardmore was done, Ardmore was the primary school that the district sent students to, regardless of what neighborhood community they went to, lived in. So Ardmore became quickly full because they were sending students from all of the towns to Ardmore because it was the new building. That was the that was no. the spiel at the time. I was a parent in the district. My I, I'm a parent in the district, and I talked to many people. Ardmore was always given for anyone that lived in Alden. They were told Ardmore was their home school because they couldn't promise. Alden Elementary School as the school, as the home school. So we put students from other towns in Ardmore, we filled that up. Walnut Avenue is lower. We also have to look at, if you're a parent, are you gonna send your, your child to a school that's been newly renovated? Or are you gonna try and send your child to a school that needs work? So we have to balance. That's what I'm talking about, that balance. So every school needs to be brought up to look equal. I, I don't I don't disagree with you. Um, actually, um, Ardmore, it's my recollection, became uh, large because of the ELL program that was moved there after renovation. But having said all this, it's interesting because I uh, we started these presentations in October, and there were uh, additions to Evans and Bell. Um, and somewhere along the way, those 
renovations um, were removed. And I asked, I believe it was at the last meeting, uh, where did the renovations to those two buildings go to overcrowding? And, and so, so now they're back. I, I think they belong back. I think we have to sit and crunch our numbers and, and make sure we can do all this, including Bell. We should not have a non-ADA compliant building in our district. It's just as simple as that. Um, and, and I think we need to figure it all out. We also can't have schools at the end of this program that are over capacity. Um, that won't help our uh, academic environment. So lots to balance for sure. So what um, are so, the oh, go ahead, Ms. Luella. What are the other schools we talking about that's not in ADA compliance besides uh, East Lansdowne? Evans and Bell. Bell. Well, Bell. There, so there's two things to, well, we're, the difference with those three is that you can't get to a floor. Um, so at, at Bell Ave, you've got, Bell Ave is actually a three-story building. The, the basement has the, the gym and the um, uh, cafeteria. So an elevator there would have to go three stories uh, as students would be going down to that, to that lower level. So those are the three buildings where I can't get from a floor to a floor. Um, you have ADA issues in most of the schools based on just plumbing needs, toilet rooms, and things like that. Um, so the Disabilities Act covers a lot of things. Um, but obviously the, the, the fact that at East Lansdowne, Evans and Bell Ave, I, I can't get from floor to floor um, or in East Lansdowne case, even into the building, um, that kind of rose to the top and priorities there. So in, in any of these schools, as we renovate them, we would also be um, you know, making sure that the toilet rooms and sinks and things in classrooms would be ADA accessible as well. But those are the only three schools that are multi-floors without elevators. But as it, as it stands now, they're without elevators. So the only time that I think I know something about ADA, the only time that they would come down on you is because you're adding additions or you're doing, uh, you're doing something else within the school. So as of now, is that a big issue for ADA compliance not having elevators? It's so, you know, we are out of compliance, but how how does that go? How how does that affect you saying that we are out, com out of compliance now, but we're still operating? But what right. if we what if we went into all those schools and did the ADA, you know, exceptions? I think that ADA clicks in when you renovate. Yes, so it does. It, Based on so, so as we touch these buildings, ADA is going to click in. Yes, I understand that. Yeah, but Bell was moved to year 820. Um, I'm not recalling, but Bell is not close um, in the next couple, in the next phase. And so it is in our best interest to move that up but also including that's two schools in, in Yating, I'm thinking we need to be spending some time in other communities as well, like Darby. Yeah, Walnut was the next one on the list as far as needs for HVAC. Um, that's a big building. Uh, so that's where the cost of renovating that was higher than you know, Evans and East Lansdowne just because of the size of that existing building. Um, but on the list of priorities, HVAC needs, um, Walnut was next there. Um, but we could certainly look at um, what an elevator addition at Bell Ave would be uh, and where that would go, whether that's inside the building, um, like at Evans or outside, uh, like at East Lansdowne. And I just want to say, I, I do totally, Mr. Callahan, I agree with you with regard to becoming compliant. That is that is key. And uh, the suggestions that you gave, I definitely do agree with, with regard to, you know, making sure that we're compliant in all of our buildings. Um, the key is, is that, you know, this plan, it has changed over a period of time. It has. Um, even Jen, you just spoke to it. 
Um, I think all board of directors are aware, but we just have to come on agreement of the prioritization. In the beginning, the prioritization was due to the fact of air quality and things of that nature. Then we moved to with regard to, we started also, now we're talking about with regard to capacity and also being compliant. So I think that somewhere down the line, it may have caused some confusion. Some people weren't really sure of why one building was uh, picked before another one. I think we have a little more clarity on that now. Um, the biggest thing is, is that being compliant, and I just wanna say that back to the board of being compliant, whatever that we need to do to be compliant and we can get, be able to get this done uh, to be compliant, I think we should move in that direction. So I just wanted to um, say those two things. Ms. Boykins, one of our, uh, as we all voted uh, to have, as you stated, uh, our primary goal was HVAC, making sure that we had good air quality. And so some of these schools, um, the, the East Lansdowne and Evans were at the top of the list for that. And Walnut was next. Second on our priority list was making sure that we were um, trying to pivot to reduce our um, enrollment uh, you know, uh, issue with pivoting to uh, having the high school um, take grade nine in and then all the other pieces that needed to kind of get in place for those components. Now, sometimes when we're uh, addressing one issue, for example, the uh, air quality, while we're at a school, when it makes sense to do a couple of those other things at the same time, instead of revisiting them where they may cost more, when we revisit them later, because things, of course, always cost more when we come back to them. So one of the things we're, we're trying to do here is balance the um, cost as well as um, our priorities so that we're not overspending down the line because we're revisiting and reopening um, the building and then re having to redo some of the permits because we're doing them again. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not saying that we, we're, we're set on this path of expansion, but this is um, one opinion. Um, just those are the things that I, I'm, I'm seeing us you know, uh, discuss. I'm not saying that one building is better than another building. Um, one neighborhood is better than another building, a neighborhood. It's, we, we're trying to follow the priorities that we've set forth. Um, and you know, we get that some of these things are um, expensive. And so we're trying to do these things in a manner where we're not, uh, we're not making the budget as large as it can be. It, uh, you know, we're kind of spreading it out so that it's, it's incremental. Mike, can you hear me, Mike? Correct me if I'm yes. wrong. So it was Evans and East Lansdowne that were in most dire need for the HVAC upgrades, but also I don't say coincidentally, we're also the two that were the most cost effective to expand capacity at the same time. Yes. Because yeah. after that is Walnut, which also is high on the HVAC need, but doesn't need to be expanded. Um, and then Bell Ave, which isn't high on the HVAC need, but could be expanded. So Evans and, and East Lansdowne kind of check both boxes there. Thank you. And as these conversations are continuing, priorities are, um, more priorities are surfacing. And so those need to be taken into consideration. Um, what would be helpful to me at this point would be to cost out um, what it's going to take to bring um, all of our schools in ADA compliant. Um, for me, that's a priority. Um, look at what it's going to cost us to do that. And then we can talk about um, expansion as it goes. Um, but we need to see some of those figures um, uh, with Bell now in the equation. I agree. So Valerie, I, I agree with you that Bell should be in the equation, but, but just to, to reference what, and again, what I'm saying is that 
I want to bring everybody into ADA compliance also. But when you do the Mike saying too is that when you do the dollar amount work that you're going to do on Evans and East Lansdowne, you're going to have to bring them into compliance in terms of the elevators. So that's why, again, it's a natural progression to say, well, they're also the easiest to expand in, in terms of, of, of cost wise. So it makes natural sense to go with Evans and East Lansdowne to make them ADA compliant with the third floors, do the expansions. And I agree with you totally that, that, that Bell should be prioritized in terms of at least the elevator to reach uh, all the floors. So we'll, we'll continue to um, dive in as, as, we, as we already are on the HVAC replacements at Evans and East Lansdowne. Um, we can kind of continue this conversation um, as far as additions or what type of additions. Again, here at Evans, we're showing the classroom and a gym. It could be one or the other or neither. Um, uh, I, I think everybody kind of understands the, the difference here of, of the elevator at Evans versus the elevator at East Lansdowne. We'll look at that as, as, as far as Bell Ave goes as well. Um, the As far as the timeline or critical path thing with the ESSER funds. We know it's at Evans and we know it's at East Lansdowne and we know it's HVAC. Um, so in, in our eyes, we've, we've been hired for that. We're going to move ahead with that because you we, you have a timeline uh, in order to achieve that uh, to, to qualify for your ESSER, fund, uh, ESSER funding. Um, we, can, we can always revisit or decide to add on to that project in addition at either one of those schools uh, and then we'll provide that number for Bell Ave as well. So uh, I just refresh my memory too, Mike. Um, Curve Field, is that, that is not being paid with ESSER funds, correct? That is not being paid with ESSER funds. That's being paid with money that we're borrowing. Yes, I believe so. Okay, thank you. So and there's Mike, really no, there's no timeline there other than whenever you want that to be completed. Sorry, go ahead. Mike, 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 I would like for you to clarify two things. One, your last statement, there's no timeline with that. I don't know if that's correct because I believe what we showed to the public and what we have as a completion date for Kerr says 20, I don't have the document in front of me and I apologize. I think it says 2023, if I'm not mistaken, or 2024, but I think it's yeah. 2023. So I'm not, I don't know if that statement is correct about there's not a timeline for that. But I do want to, I, I would like for you to clarify for the board, just so that we're all clear, is that this discussion does not impact the continuation of us doing what we said we were going to do at Kerr Field. Because you have everything you need and decisions have been made as it relates to Kerr Field. Is that correct or is that incorrect? Yes, and I, I'm sorry if I misspoke. I meant, I meant there's no federal timeline for Kerr. Um, obviously, we've, we've talked about that uh, space being open for the uh, summer of 2023. Um, okay. So you're right for that. I apologize. I was, I no was problem. thinking of it on the, the requirement for funding. Got um, it. And yes, we can, um, we can move ahead with that. I believe um, we've sent along uh, to the district a, a package from a civil engineer to start the testing uh, and the survey work there. I believe that's uh, on your agenda uh, coming up at the end of the month to um, to get them on board and, and move ahead with that. And we are going to um, do an, uh, um, what's the what's the title or the name if- uh, if, if Cooperative we, Purchasing Agreement. Thank you. We are going <laughs> to make sure, I always miss, miss that, Cooperative Purchasing Agreement. We are going to ensure that we offer entities the opportunity to come to us so that we can look at companies that fall under that agreement. Correct. Yes. Um, okay. The quick, quick version of that is it's all through CoStars, which is great. Um, it allows you to essentially you're you're purchasing something that's already been uh, been bid, uh, and there's several companies that can do that. So different than how we'll have to bid uh, these projects, uh, it's a much more straightforward uh, process uh, when it comes to the field. So there's a couple of companies that can do that, uh, and that's the next step um, with that. Okay, and I just want to make sure that we are able to inform the board and we can follow up offline so we'll have something to give to the board. I just want to make sure that they are clear on what process we're going to use to do that, uh, meaning to identify a company under the CoStars uh, agreement. 
Yes, and the surveying and the testing that you're talking about at, at uh, the upcoming board meeting that that's needed regardless of, of correct company would be used for all. Yep. That. So it's it's keeping the schedule moving ahead. Agreed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So that's. I mean, we're good if that's some, if that's in the. <laughs> I'll excuse me. I have something I'd like to say. I know I've been very particularly quiet. You know, taking this all in. First of all, I'd like to thank the board members who who spoke up in support of Bell Avenue. It just really excited that we're gonna move forward on that. I also like to mention that the ADA compliance, which I agree with the HB, HVAC needs is, and later uh, the expansion. But also what I like to add is to look at uh, the disability, dealing with the disability act that Bell Avenue definitely need to be handicap accessible because it's, my opinion is totally out of compliance. But once again, I'd like to thank the board members for their support. And so as far as uh, and so as far as next steps um, in the timeline, Jan, are we it is is it your thinking that we would at the committee of the whole meeting take some action on these items? What is what is what is what is the thinking? I know that that date had been put out there because I, I also want to make sure that we're able to address the needs or that may be too soon. Uh I, I think we, as a board, we need to decide and, and, and come together and, and um, have, a, have a recommendation that we can all kind of agree on. Um, I think another discussion needs to be had. Um, I'd like to move forward. However, you know, with, with the discourse tonight, I believe that we need to take some time and, and reflect and okay. potentially um, either push it back to our business meeting or another date afterwards. Okay. And so can and we- so that, oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Bicotes, oh, but to ahead. that point, Jan, I would love to see, because that was one of my questions coming in, what were we gonna be asked to approve on the 19th? And could we look at that? Because I didn't, I didn't get a sense of what we were being asked to approve. So maybe if we got a sample motion, um, right, maybe not the 19th, but maybe the meeting after that, um, you know, talk about it and discuss on the 19th and vote on the 25th. Um, I just don't know what that motion is asking us to do. So don't know how to react. That's, uh, that's a good question. Right, I think that one of the th components is, are we, are we going with pure HVAC only or HVAC with um, the additions that have been proposed so far, uh, because we're right now looking at uh, those two options uh, on the table. Um, we're, well, we're trying we, to go ahead. We haven't approved moving forward with Kerr. The only action the board has taken is to approve moving forward with KCBA and their expenses, to my knowledge. Correct. So that motion for the 19th has referenced in the agenda, you know, what it, it, it'd be nice to look at what that's asking us to do so we could react to it. And I thought we had approved Kerr, maybe I'm wrong. And Jeff. Yeah, I thought we have, I with, thought we did as well. With the, bond, with the borrowing of the money, isn't that specifically that the board approved? Wasn't that for curfew? I think the yes, borrowing, I have to look through the wording. I believe the borrowing, the borrowing encompassed all three projects, if I remember the wording of it properly. Um, and all three projects being meaning Kerr, Eastlands, down in Evans. I think it was a blanket statement in the in the approval of that of that um, bond. Correct, but the approval of that with the bond was Kerfeel, so that is correct. Kerfeel has been approved, and we can move forward with that. The two other pieces that were approved for the schools are only for the HVAC side of the house. It's not the additions. Is that correct? Because the amount of money only totals curfew plus what we needed to do for the HVAC plus, not including the additions. Correct. So the money that was the money that was approved was that was a was that amount, and the other amount was ESSER was ESSER funded. Correct. So all of that's been approved and we're ready to move on. The discussion point is the additions and now we're adding 
because I was going to make sure we're clear on this, what we need to come back to the board with is information about compliance. I think that's the new add-on, if I'm not mistaken. But you guys, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure we get the information back to the board. The compliance is the new request. Right. So I have that motion in front of me, and it says to provide funds for planning, designing, acquiring, constructing, and equipping of renovations and alterations to Kerr Athletic Field, renovations and alterations to William B. Evans School and East Lansdowne and or other taking other improvement projects for the benefit of the district. Correct. So that total amount would not include the additions. Do you agree? I'm just making sure that we're all on the same page. Um, I, I would have to have a solicitor read that because it says renovations and alterations. It's a fairly blanket statement. Yeah. But the amount, of, I'm sorry, but the amount of money is what is guiding us. So when you look at the amount of money that was associated with the projects based upon what KCBA provided, it's only going to cover a certain amount of things that we can do. That's why I'm saying it was, it was- I would tend to agree with that statement. And that's why I asked specifically, did that preclude us from taking up any of the other issues such as expansion and, and compliance uh, at a later date? And the answer was no, that does not preclude us Correct. from doing that. And that's essentially what we're doing right now. Correct. Um, so, and as far so as something for the paid. board, Jen, I was wondering, Jan, is that something should, that should come as a recommendation from the property committee itself to the board as a whole? Probably. But the other the other piece I want to add to this is the um, the borrowing. We borrowed the max that we would be borrowing for for our, um, as far as I recall, we were going to try to borrow only up to forget what it, the, the number is. I want to say ten million dollars. For each borrowing um, and that is the max that we would try to borrow from um, so that we would we would be use it, utilizing the least amount of uh, interest um, rate going forward but we would have to do multiple so this was the first in a series of borrowings that we would have so I don't know if this amount would cover everything that we're looking for but it surely does begin the process it's it's not the full amount that we were were borrowing and and, no, and, and with interest rates going up, that's maybe something we should revisit also. And our hang up, if if you will, is has nothing to do with curfew. We're sure. struggling with the schools and how we're going to do expansion or not. So curfew is not a part of that equation at, at this at this time. It's all the other stuff. It's the schools. I simply asked the question because I was, I wanted to be clear on terms of the ESSER funding and, and the deadline on that. No, no, but I, I'm, I'm asking in general, not as, as the board. I can't hear you, Dr. B. Coach. I'm sorry. So the money that we're using for the two schools with HVAC, that's covered by ESSER. That's not something that we're borrowing. So we know that as far as I'm, I'm aware the state is, has approved it or is going to approve it. We still haven't gotten an answer. So the HVAC piece, we can definitely do that because we have the money to do the HVAC work based upon what we put into the plan. And we have, well, I'm saying we have, we have the money that we've asked for and your board has approved for Curve Field. That's what we know that we have. So I think it goes back to Jan's point. Would the board want to increase that? I think it's $10 million, if I'm not mistaken that limit or can we and if we can't then how then do we address the other items such as expansion and compliance so i believe in our presentation from our financial people it was 10 million dollars a year and Correct. we are we aren't slated to start these projects shovel ready until april of next year at the earliest so we could at, do those additions with the next portion of the next $10 million um, because we know that we have to keep going, right? That this is just a process. So we could do that also. Also, I believe the last number with Kerr Field was about 6 million. So there will be leftover money to shovel ready those two projects also if that is what the board decided 
So you could you could look to your next pot of money for right because maybe the next pot of money is for walnuts um, air handling and the two additions while you're doing the air handling on Evans and East Lansdowne, just so as a thought. The only thing I would correct you on with that, Jen, is that the next two projects plus the elevator for Bell. Well, if if that. Yeah, I mean that that would be fine. Um, the next right, two but I mean compliance is is a is a moving target. If Bell, I, I think it's very important to get Walnuts air handling done, right? Like that's a huge school and very did very poor on the air handling. That's why it's up on the list, and we want to you know show love in Darby. So we could do that oh. and Bell at the same time, um, right? But we just keep going, right? We just, yeah. like, we know we have work to do and we just keep going at it. Yeah, and I, I, agree, with, I agree with what you said, uh, Joe. So, so Jen, Jen, can I offer you one correction, please, on, the, yeah. on what you said? So this year we're borrowing 10. Next year we're slated to borrow 10, but that 10 that we're borrowing is the ramp up money. So if you, if you, and I can, we can show the drawdown schedule again. Right. That 10 for next year is ramp up money for the high school. So what we're talking now, if we're doing the additions that you're talking about, is an additional 10 on top of that. So next year, and again, I, you would have to run it by Jamie again. Right. Right. You would go from borrowing 10 next year to borrowing possibly 20 or 25. Well, I think we would have to look at that. I, I think there's a lot of numbers we should look at. We should look at the cost of doing the addition with the HVAC and then without, right? We should write how much does it cost us to push that to the end? I'm very concerned about capacity at those two schools, um, especially Evans, because it houses so many of our special children. Um, right with our special programs so like i think there's a lot of numbers and and to miss ivory's point to look at populations and where they are in our schools why is why is walnut only at you know 77 percent capacity where are those young people um you know just to correct assumptions and and keep the ball moving so i think so i think i i've taken away I've taken away that um, we want to get information about populations. I think we can get that. I think we also have to realize that when we have, I call them district-wide programs in certain schools, that does pull away students from their home school. So if those students were in their home schools, utilizations may be much higher than they currently are. So I think that may come out when we look at the populations. Um, the other thing um, we want to look at is the cost to be compliant in all of our schools that are not. I think one other thing that may be helpful for the board as you look at or we'll have this discussion, um, and this is just a suggestion, it seems like there are three criteria or priorities, if you will. So is it in this order? And I'm not saying it is, but is it air handling compliance capacity or is it compliance air handling and capacity or is it capacity compliance and air handling? So it's like, we have to decide, I think now that we're at this point, what is the priority of those three things? And I think that may help with some of the decision-making and like the next round of conversations. I just offer that as a suggestion. Can't they all be equal, sir? Not for this particular exercise, I'm sorry. <laughs> I agree, like, Dr. B. Coates. I, I think that that's a good idea. And I thought, I think that's what, I thought that's what we were um, in terms of when we had the last discussion about handling HVAC at East Lansdowne and Evans and tabling the, the renovation so we can have further discussion to make sure we're, we're on the same, we're on point in terms of financially being able to do so. So I think we, I mean, we have some work to do and, you know, and Jeff and Jan, please correct me if I'm wrong with my thinking. You know, we will work together over the next couple of weeks along with Mike, because I think it's like this is one like scenario A, scenario B, scenario C. Um, but it may be important for us to take, you know, 
a poll of the board to say like, what, what, are, what is the priority in those three areas? I'm not necessarily saying tonight, there may be another way to do it or accomplish it. And then look at, okay, as a board, this is what we're saying are our priorities. Because I think everybody has a viewpoint in reference to those three criteria. So I'm just throwing those things out there. I, I don't, if, if that's okay, we can move forward that way. Um, Jan, what are, what are your thoughts as the property chair? Uh, so I, I will um, do an informal poll uh, with the boards after afterwards to see okay. where we're at um, with regards to those three uh, uh, those three criterion and see where we fall and where we land um, and then we'll come back to the board and decide you know and 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 codify those for ourselves as we deal with um, additional additions moving forward. Mr. Chair, for 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 clarity for myself, please. Yes, so you will still prepare a motion for our uh, meeting of the holes? Uh, I don't think we're ready yet for everything. Uh, I think we can move forward with pro most likely getting started with Kerfield um, as, as uh, we can get underway with that kind of, uh, with the planning for that. Uh, we have no discussion over that uh, in terms of um, anybody objecting to that, I don't think. Um, regarding uh, Evans and East Lansdowne, I think we need to um, take a look at uh, if the priorities that we are have established, do these schools meet those priorities that we're discussing? Um, and then we'll make that recommendation. I think, you know, in, in my mind, in my opinion, um, that we have ticked off the correct boxes for those two schools to move forward. However, you know, I am one, one, one person out of nine and I am uh, representative of, you know, the, rep, the, the um, constituents of, of my neighborhood. It, it, we are, are taking a look at, you know, making sure that we are being responsible with those dollars. Um, I, I, I don't want to revisit a school after we've visited it once within a short amount of time because we're, that would again, um, say we didn't do the right job in the first place. I also don't want to spend extra money because things are inevitably getting more expensive over time. So if we're going to touch a school, we might as well touch it and do uh, the, um, the things we need to do with it and move along to the next project. That, that's my opinion. And sir, the second question I have is, I heard you earlier mentioning about possibly moving the vote back. Um, now, my question was always about the ESSER funds, and I know we have deadlines that we have to meet with those ESSER funds. So um, will we be harming ourselves pushing this vote back? Uh, I, I don't believe we are. Um, you know, the HVAC planning and those components are still moving forward. I think the, the conversation really is around, do we want to address these issues right now? Um, or wait and revisit them in a few years. Is, is that the right decision? I don't know. That's a decision we as a group need to decide, but I wanna be able to put the, these options in front of you and you guys help decide the fate of, of these uh, schools. And I'm sure you're paying attention to deadlines and dates, but I just, I want us, I want us all to be, um, mindful of deadlines and dates when it comes to those ESSER funds and that we don't lose that money. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Hopkins. Thank, that's a great um, outlook on that. And we, we, thank you for the reminder. Any other thoughts? I would just say since the, uh, this is just my thought, the HVAC is done through the ESSER funds that that would be a priority in every school first. That's just my thought. Thank you. Because we have to use that by a certain time. That is correct. And right now the, the to, to schools where those ESSER funds are going to be utilized is Evans and Bell because they do require the most amount of uh, need. Uh, but the, you know, and I don't think that that's going to change at any time soon. However, you know, do we do those additional um, components now or do we wait? Well, to the point we need to look at how much it costs us to wait. Right. 
And don't worry, the ESSER funds aren't going to go that far. Right. And, and, and again, and we've no, used, and just as a reminder, board members, we've used, or we've, let me say this, we've allocated all of the ESSER funds that we can legally allocate for the projects. So that's allocated. We're just waiting for the state to say, yes, check, it's approved, and we're going to keep rolling. So I don't think, I'm not necessarily concerned about us losing those dollars. So I just want to confirm that for board members because I hear some concern, but I, I think we're good with the ESSER dollars. Thank you for easing my, my anxiety on it. Mr. Tonk, I have a question. Yes. yes. Or, or Jeff, what is our bond rating? Is it good or is it in the middle or is it bad? Currently, we are a triple B plus with a positive, no, with a stable outlook. Um, that it just got moved to a stable outlook. It was a negative outlook prior to the close of last June, but that's where we stand currently. All right, thank you. Which, which, so to answer your question, ideally, the, you want to be in the A or triple A categories where you would like to be. That's correct. Thank you again. All right, and Ms. Mr. Wright, I don't know if you were at the budget meeting where we were told flat out not to spend our fund balance to pay the bills or that would negatively impact our credit rating? Uh, I don't think I mentioned anything about the fund balance. No, no, but I, I was I was just I know, communicating. But you, brought it up, but you brought it up. I didn't mention anything. I just asked about the bond no, rating. I, but I was communicating something that could affect but the bond rating. That was not my question. Thank you. Any other thoughts from uh, any other board members before we um, move to the next step? Just the, how soon can we expect um, the the change, the, the what it's going to cost, um, looking at what's going on potentially with uh, adding Bell to this equation? And um which pushed that bell up in in the time frame and then walnut street was already um moved up because of its hvac um rating so i'm just looking for what it's the cost how soon do you think we'll be able to get some of that I can get you some for the if, if we're just like talking about the elevator edition at Bell, um, we can get something early next week. We just want to take okay. a look and again make sure is that something we can do internally or does that have to be external? And then you know one of the things that um, we want to also consider and think about is while we're looking at all these things, what else? do we need to address um, as Dr. B. Coates is going to look at, you know, compliance and, and, and what that might look like for all of our schools. Um, I believe there was a cost at one point for all of the projects. A number was quoted for us. I don't recall what it was. I want to say it was in the $150 million range, uh, something like that. Um, You're correct. Yeah, that, correct. I mean, if we did that, that, that that's that's a lot um, of projects going on at once, um, but I, I that that is if we went and did everything, I believe, oh, or is that just minimal, uh, Doctor? Because do you recall? The I thought the one hundred and fifty was everything. Okay, that was my understanding. That was like the what? The, that was like the worst case scenario. Okay. Jan, I do think what kept us up on whatever night that was Monday, we need to spend some time um, talking more about that and that's fundraising. Um, and I'm willing to talk more um, with you about that and maybe we can um, 
partner with people in a community to at least jumpstart that. So I don't know what um, plans people have, but I, I know bricks and benches and just being creative. Um, it was almost midnight. <laughs> Look, I, I welcome any kind of fundraising option um, to, to help offset if we can. Um, you know, I, I don't know how that might be. <laughs> yes, Jen. There's also advocacy around PlanCon being reinstated because if PlanCon's reinstated, that could save us up to, that could get us matching funds for up to 30%. So that advocacy um, to our legislators regarding PlanCon is super, super important. Um, and I, I don't see it happening this year, but in the length of this project, it, it most certainly will happen. And we just need to advocate for ourselves for it to happen sooner than later for the state, because that is really the biggest pile of money that we could help our, our projects with. And so I'm, I am willing to work with um, Jan and, and any others in terms of how we go about raising some dollars. I am having another meeting with our um, legislators, a one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm continuing to advocate, but I think we do need to maybe develop after spring break a, um, what would I call it, an advocacy plan to acquire funds and what does that mean so we are coordinated and we don't have nine different people doing nine different things. I think there needs to be a packet that we give to people and say why you should make this investment, what we're trying to do in our district, what does it look like, so that people can understand we have a plan of action and this is where we're trying to go over the next five to 10 years, come and join us. Um, so that's just my suggestion. That's where we were. So I'm, I'm with you. I'll volunteer. <laughs> I would like to uh, I would like to add you. Know, I have already been in contact with some of my state some of my legislators in regards to plan in plan con. And I plan to particularly go up to Harrisburg and do a little bit more advocacy around that issue. But that could help us tremendously. Great. Advocacy Day is April 25th for all school board directors if you would like to attend. Okay, I'll be there. You have I'll an email from PSBA in your email. Okay. Sounds good. Any other board members have questions, comments? All right. Any uh, attendees have comments or questions? You can raise your hand. I don't see anyone, Jan, from my view. I don't either. I just wanted to make sure I gave a long enough wait time so that I'm, I'm not cutting anybody off. Because <laughs> they may be doing something else and you know, trying to get back to the keyboard and click, because I know I was struggling finding the mic <laughs> a moment ago, couldn't find it. All right, I don't see any hands. Um, I'm gonna call the meeting tonight. I want to thank everybody for attending, and I th I thank uh, everyone for the ideas, thoughts, and discourse. Uh, it was I think it was very productive. Um, thank you, Mike, for coming out and and answering some of the difficult questions. Jeff and Dr. B. Coates, thank you for your time, and of course, my fellow board members, thank you for all of your time. You're welcome. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Jan. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.